and said he was ready when we are ready. Are we ready? I, I think we're ready. So He's ready. Uh, we're ready. The question is, are they ready? Are you ready for this? You think you're ready for this? Da, 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 da. You may not be ready for this. Oh, okay. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Troy David Phillips, Flashback Comics and Games, Woodbridge, Virginia. Kevin Goswan, ComicsOnline.com for everything, everything geek pop, pop culture. culture. Right here on the microphones, comics, games, movies. Everything geek pop culture, like the microphone says. We've That's us. To you. All across the country and around the world, you can find comicsonline.com. We're, we're, we're up in your conventions, interviewing your peeps. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I am really excited about this week. Me too. This is a this is a big week. It's, the funny thing is, it's not a big week when it comes. It, it's not like we've got a broad base, but we've got a very exciting week. We do, we do. And for those who don't know, if maybe you weren't paying attention, maybe your head was in the sand, maybe you're just exhausted from Free Comic Book Day from this past Saturday. Or if this uh, is the first time you're watching the Flashback Top Five, you're welcome. <laughs> this week, ladies and gentlemen, begins. The Marvel Secret Wars mega, mega event. There's, there, there, there are no words to describe what this event is going to be. If There will be eventually. Well, yeah. We'll have to make up new words. <laughs> we will turn to our friends in Germany. German language is absolutely astounding. And in, in it's, it's, it, it's brilliant. When they don't have a word, they compound two existing words to make one that works. Or more than two. Yeah, or more than two if necessary. So, uh, so uh, Germans, help us out on this one. Really awesome comic book that we've been waiting for for a long time, but we're a little afraid of, but we also expect it to be really awesome. In 1984, if you're my age, now uh, you know for poor Kevin here, that was that was what five years before you were born. I wish. No, uh, actually, I don't wish. I, I've I've had a good time. In fact, 1984 was a good time. I think I was in the seventh grade when Secret Wars, the original Secret Wars number one came out, and I I think I, I mentioned on a previous episode that I bought that at Tierra Santa Drug in Tierra Santa, California. Now, at this moment in time, I'm holding up a copy of. Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number eight, debuting the amazing Spider Man's new black costume. And this is the first we saw it in Secret Wars. However, we had already seen it in Amazing Spider Man, Web of Spider Man, and Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man 252, to be precise. Yeah. Uh, homage to the classic Steve Ditko cover. But this uh, is how, this is where we finally find out wait, how did this come about? Now, what we didn't know was that this costume was actually a living symbiote, and it was drawing off of Peter. It was mimicking his powers. It was neg learning to negate his spider sense. Uh, it, was it was on its way to becoming pretty insidious. And it was web-swinging him around the country. It would get get on him and then web-swing him around the uh, around city. The, not the country, the city, uh, at night while he was sleeping. While he was sleeping, it would go around and, and, and web-swing around, because why wouldn't you? Yeah, really. Uh, the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars uh, was basically a mini-series, a 12-issue, actually a maxi-series, they called it, a uh, 12-issue maxi-series that introduced a new cosmic powerhouse, the Beyonder, to brought together a large team of heroes and a large team of villains and bid them to slay their enemies so that anything they desired would be theirs. Nothing that they dreamed was beyond his abilities. This sounds pretty epic. And since Galactus was on the villain team, this guy must be pretty tough. This story took us into a climactic battle with Doctor Doom versus the Beyonder. Doctor Doom would first siphon power from Galactus and then use that, plus a couple of uh, enhancements to his armor, to steal the Beyonder's power and remake himself as a near omnipotent being. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking to myself, wow, that might be the most powerful that anyone has ever been. And then Thanos got the Infinity Gauntlet. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. they've, you know, these are comics. They've got a continually one-up themselves. Yeah, we, we ramp all the way up there, all the way to the point where the Fantastic Four went to heaven to bring the soul of Ben Grimm back. Right. And, yes. and, and, and who was God? 
Uh, I believe that was Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering what he looks like uh, uh, in the Marvel Universe, it's uh, it's Jack Kirby. Now, the secret... In the X-Files Universe, it's it's uh, 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 Burt Reynolds. Oh, wow. True story. Oh. Well... When Secret Wars concluded at 12 issues, the heroes came back to Earth. Uh, some of the changes persisted, like Spider-Man's black costume. Some of the changes did not. Iron Man had that armor upgrade that didn't last very long. Uh, it was a little bit too powerful, and he wanted to shuck off uh, the extra enhancements. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> we got back to business as usual. Interesting Unless, unless thing, you were the thing. Well, yeah, unless you were the thing. Interesting thing about the Secret Wars comic series was that it also supported a new line of action figures, uh, which Marvel had not had an action figure line at that point in time for several years. Uh, <clears throat> not since Mego, really. Yeah, really, the, the world's greatest superhero line from Mego. Yeah. However, we weren't done with the Beyonder, we weren't done with Secret Wars quite yet. You see, in 1985, we would have Secret Wars 2. This time, the Beyonder comes to Earth. I'm holding up here the first issue. Uh, cover art by John Byrne. John Byrne did not do the interior. Uh, that would actually be uh, Al Milgram. But in Secret Wars 2, the Beyonder comes to Earth. Um, he creates a physical body for himself. He uses Captain America as a template. He seeks out Spider-Man. Spider-Man has to teach this cosmic powerhouse how to use the bathroom. Uh, you know, what, what, what are these biological functions that I'm having? I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a silly moment in otherwise a cosmically grandiose spectacle. Nine issues was Secret Wars 2. Um, Secret Excuse Wars me. 2, also known as uh, Jim Shooter's Folly. Well, there are people who didn't like it very much. There were people who thought that the story fell flat, that it didn't live up to its full expectations. But whether you loved it or hated it, it was a successful event. Now, Secret Wars 1 had very limited crossovers. Most of those crossovers were contained in the heroes coming to the Beyonders' battleship construct and coming back from that construct. Ben Grimm, the thing, had more Secret Wars to cr our Secret Wars crossovers. Secret Wars 2, however, tied itself to the ongoing title line at that time so that Secret Wars 1, or se the number one issue of Secret Wars 2, this is where it gets confusing, <laughs> uh, actually brought in the X-Men, Iron Man, who was Jim Rhodes at the time, and Captain America. And as the series went on, we would see crossovers in The Amazing Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, The New Mutants, uh, The Fantastic Four, The Avengers... And so on. I mean, yeah. almost everybody got it was, at least it, one Secret Wars 2 crossover. It was a lot of crossovers. Not, not so much like you would see today, where you would, you would spin off little, little mini-series. Exactly. But each individual uh, title would have an issue that tied in. And there'd be a little marker in the corner that would tell you Secret Wars 2 crossover. Yeah. So you knew that you needed to pick this up and read it with that week's or that uh, issue of uh, Secret Wars 2. Uh, there was also an expansion on the action figure line, I might add. True. <laughs> now, that's, that's when we got Falcon. The, uh, yes, and Daredevil and a great many others. Yeah. Now, overall, the Marvel product line wasn't as expansive as it is today. Uh, there was only one X-Men book properly. There was only, well, I guess there were, no, there was really only New one Mutants. Avengers. Um, and there was uh, the Fantastic Four. They had the one title. Um, Spider-Man had three yeah. You know, but that that was the style of the time. This time out, Secret Wars will be much, much, much larger. Lots more titles. <clears throat> Three interlocking arcs of story. Battle World, War Zone, and Last Days. Uh, the story events that have been in Jonathan Hickman's Avengers, the incursions, have led us up to Secret Wars. As well Here as New is. Avengers. Well, yes, and the New Avengers, also written by Jonathan Hickman. Um, but everything has been building to some kind of conclusion within its own title, like Fantastic Four, for example. Sure. Uh, and clearing Miles the Morales. slate, opening the way for the Ultimates universe to combine with the 616 universe, and so on, and so on. So, I showed you Secret Wars. I showed you Secret Wars 2. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the variants for the new Marvel Secret Wars. 
getting 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 a good getting a good glimpse of that. There we Stare go. Stare at that till your eyeballs bleed. I didn't mean literally, Kev. <laughs> no, no, I'm. Uh, now, and, now, now, bring out that other variant. The, the, the uh... yes, yes, yes. Now, this is the action figure variant, Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars. And then there, Kevin is holding up the standard uh, cover, uh, which I will have plenty of those. So come on into the comic shop and get your copy of Secret Wars number one, Secret Wars. Number two will be on sale uh, on the 13th of May. So you don't have to wait long. This thing is just going to keep happening. Uh, and I will be available to tell people what other titles. Hey, check this out. Take a look at this. You want to see this. This is really good. I will read them as quickly as possible. Uh, I did actually conclude the 13 episodes of Daredevil. i gotten caught up on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm caught up on Game of Thrones. Wow. I've cleared a lot of my television slate out of the way so I could focus on my comic reading. My comic reading, it's been woefully ignored by me. I've had so much going on, but I'm really getting caught up on this. So, Secret Wars, that's a thing you really want to get into that. And if you're interested in the predecessor series, uh, I have a bunch of them. I don't have all of them. People have been coming and diving on those things. And I'm going to tell you, Daredevil, people have been looking at Daredevil back issues. They picked up Kevin Smith's uh, Bullseye, right. uh, the unfinished limited series, and uh, Sins of the Father, mm -hmm. uh, Man Without Fear, okay. Battling Jack Murdoch, Daredevil versus Punisher, and of course, the actual Daredevil back issues, not just the Frank Miller issues, but even the earlier ones. People are hunting down appearances of the Gladiator, the Stilt Man. Uh, they want to know who the Arranger is. They want to know if one of these characters in the show was actually supposed to be the son, Richard Fisk. The Rose. Remember him? Oh, the, the Rose. The Rose was so cool. And no, we don't have the Rose. No, we don't. Not yet. Not yet. Be patient. There will be a season two. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, there will be the Jessica Jones series. Jewel, Jessica Jones, Nitrous, Power Woman, whatever you want to call her. That really awesome Brian Michael Bendis character from Alias, who was also featured in the pages of New Avengers. Uh, start looking for her stuff before everybody else grabs it all. And then you can work on your Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, Power Man, Power Man Iron Fist, Heroes for Hire. And when you're done with that, you can come back for my personal favorite, Iron Fist. That's right. Marvel Premiere, mm -hmm. Iron Fist, Power Man Iron Fist, oh, yeah. Iron Fist Limited Series, uh -huh. Iron Fist the other limited series, yeah. Iron Fist Wolverine, Heroes for Hire. Yeah, that's a thing. So don't sleep on those. Don't let those things get away from you. Get right on top of it. Uh, other people are getting excited. They're watching the shows. They're seeing the movies. And they're coming back to hunt down the comic back issues to get their history and background. I'll continue doing the Troy Spotlight videos, and I will bring you what I can bring you in the way of uh, an oral bibliography. But uh, between now and then, now that I've told you about Secret Wars, past and present, uh, we've got a few other things in uh, our top five pick. We've uh, actually got our top five. So this is what we're, we're planning on doing uh, for for a little while here, we're, we're trying out a, a bit of a format change. Uh, figure we ought to tell our our, our uh, well, audience here. We, we, we could. We could t tell. Well, we'll show them as well. But uh, what we're what we're gonna do is talk about something. Uh, something in the past uh, to start out each episode and then, of course, go into our weekly top five. Yeah, because at Flashback, we like to flash back. That we uh, do. And there are a lot of newer collectors or a lot of people who've gotten into this hobby much more recently who really don't know you know, what, what to pick up, what to read, what to take a look at. Uh, Marvel and DC both have done things like Marvel's uh, True Believers series, uh, where they re reprinted uh, Armor Wars, Infinity Gauntlet, Civil War, Planet Hulk. Uh, DC Comics recently re-released a lot of trade paperbacks, which would clue people in to uh, some of the alternate worlds of Convergence. Yeah. Um, I'd strenuously recommend picking up Kingdom Come, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Flashpoint, any number of those things. Uh, I recently got back in uh, Civil War, the trade paperback, yeah. and Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, that's one way to go back and pick up some of these uh, some of these jewels from the past. 
recent and further back. And so next week, uh, before we, we jump into our actual top five, uh, we're going to talk. You're going to you're going to educate me uh, on, absolutely on some convergence. Uh, yes, I am. Excellent. So I'm bringing look forward to I'm bringing that Kevin week. up into the DC universe. We're going to hit the floor running. It could happen. So so are you you ready to see what's in this week, Kev? I'm ready. Let me see your top five, and I'll I'll right, just put uh, them up in front of the starting right here. Yeah, Swords uh, of Sorrow. Swords by Gail of Sorrow Simone from Dynamite Entertainment. Uh, Swords of Sorrow is a crossover series that will be bringing together some of the female characters that Dynamite Entertainment has had. Uh, Red Sonia in particular, a favorite of mine, handled beautifully by Gail Simone. If you have not been checking this series out, you should definitely do so. Um, so I've seen Lady Demon, uh, I've seen Dejah Thoris, I've seen Vampirella, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Jungle Girl, yeah. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So uh, I'm definitely. I'm. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Here. Look at, uh, here we go. Here we yeah. Go. Yeah. I got yeah. it. Uh, he's. He, Kev's got it. He's using two hands here, ladies and gentlemen. That is some of the beautiful interior artwork. Gail Simone is handling the writing chores, and Sergio Davila is handling the art chores. And this is just simply amazing. I love Dynamite Entertainment. Dynamite brings back a lot of classic characters. They also do the Shadow. They do Doc Savage, uh, the Avenger from Justice. Inc. They've given us uh, masks, Project Superpowers, bringing back a lot of great Golden Age characters, uh, Red Sonia, John Carter, Warlord of Mars. Swords of Sorrow is yet one more thing in their list. All right, now, <clears throat> two Marvel things for you. Bang, bang, back to back. One is the Inhuman Annual. If you've been following the Inhuman series, uh, it has been introduced, it has introduced us, I should say, to several new Inhumans characters, characters outside of the royal family, characters who came into their Inhuman heritage very recently, uh, comparatively speaking, you know, as opposed to Gorgon and Triton and Black Bolt and Medusa, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this continues on. Charles Soule and uh, Stegman and Isanov on the chores. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful book. I like where it's going. I like the Inhumans as a concept. If you've been watching the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you've seen a bit of the cinematic universe version of the Inhumans. I believe there's a lot more to see. Now, the reason that I said you're getting a Marvel twofer here, that was Inhuman. This... Captain America special is the third part of the Inhuman Error uh, limited uh, story arc. Three parts. This is part three of three. Uh, the first was in Amazing Spider-Man, and the second was uh, the Inhuman special itself. And now here we are, all new Captain America. Uh, we have in the pages of the Inhuman Error the return of Red Raven and the Bird People. Uh, the Bird People, the aliens who are an offshoot of the Inhumans. Um, I've described them in other places. Uh, I can't help it. I love this particular story arc. Again, I love the Inhumans, and I love Marvel's classic character like Red Raven and the Wizard and the Patriot and Miss America and 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 on and on uh, all of those great characters you know wonderful 1940s characters having the Red Raven back even in this altered form even as something of an antagonist you know just having him back makes me feel really good inside mm. you know me I like the, uh, the the generational aspect of of superheroes like your JSA type of thing and when you talk about uh, you know the Wizard and Miss America and and uh, you know these types of you know World War II era characters that makes me happy. Well, how about that? So uh, Kevin here will obviously be checking out all new Captain America special to get the third part. He has to because you see he already got the Amazing Spider-Man, so he that got part I did for one. Sure. And I talked him into Inhuman. Is it in my box? Because I don't know. Did I buy it already? You already bought it. You just haven't read it yet. <laughs> okay. It's uh, it's one of the two hundred comics that you haven't read yet. Oh, I think there's more than 200 tries. Oh, well. <laughs> Behind on things. So, so now, whether or not he likes it, all new Captain America special number one, Inhuman Error part three. Inhuman annual, not special. This is a separate thing. Inhuman annual number one. Okay. And lastly, because I am a huge fan of the beautiful, intelligent, and talented Linda Carter, the Wonder Woman 77 special. Okay? Now, 
This great, big, fat, square-bound book features a story that is based on the 1977 live-action Wonder Woman series that featured Linda Carter. Um, This is not unlike the Batman 66 comic and the Batman 66 Lost Episode, based on the live-action Batman television series starring Adam West and Burt Ward and Cesar Romero and so many other greats. There were some good things about the Wonder Woman television series, and there were some kind of kitschy things about the Wonder Woman television series. Linda Carter and Linda Carter. But, yes, Linda Carter was a great goodness in the role. She was beautiful. Uh, she handled her sequences as well as you know she possibly could. Uh, she was not an athletic actress per se. Uh, you know She's not uh, Cynthia Rothrock or a Lucy Liu or somebody of, of that nature. But she had a poise and a grace with the role, and she added that certainly to Wonder Woman. Um, and she handled the role without making Wonder Woman look, you know, well like a simp. Uh, She managed to introduce Wonder Woman to a whole new generation of fans, whether they read the comics or not, they were watching the show. The show was getting pretty good ratings. Uh, I believe the first season took place uh, set in the Second World War, while the second season brought us into modern times, and we launched into the grandson of Steve Trevor. Oh. I didn't uh, that was how they segued uh, from one to the other. So, uh, but Linda Carter was still twirling around, changing in a bright flash of light from her plain, ordinary Diana Prince clothing into the star-spangled uniform that we know and love as Wonder Woman. So, yes, yes, Linda Carter, we heart you definitely. You know, I, I, it, it has uh, come to my attention that she is a uh, something of an icon in the gay community. And, uh, you know, I, along with brunch, I get it. <laughs> I'm into it. Uh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, she is, uh, she, she is phenomenal, and she has lost nothing. Time has taken nothing from this woman. No. I think she's immune to the ravages of time. That's probably due to her, uh, you know, heritage, you know, being a... Uh, Amazonian. Amazonian. Yeah, I, I think she is actually Amazonian. She probably is. Yeah, I think yeah. that's how she got the role. So my top five... Your top five. Slide those things over here so I can use both my hands and... Well, or, or are you going to use your hands and I'm just going to talk about your books? Yeah, so here we go. Uh, starting out with Orphan Black number three. Uh, number three features Allison. And what they've done with the Orphan Black series thus far is they've gone and focused on one Seastra per issue, which... Is awesome. Um, you might think, oh, well, you know, it uh, in a in a 22 page or however many pages these guys have uh, issue, it might be a little quick to swap between each of the uh, of the clones. But uh, here we've got, um, you know, we've got a, a focus on just one, and uh, oh, I've loved it so far. IDW has done a great job. This is uh, Manson Fawcett Hauser. Qua Stags and Fenolio uh, doing doing the uh, the creation here. Uh, that's uh, I'm just reading credits off the cover. I don't know these people, but they've done a fantastic job so far. And uh, and and as I've noticed, not only do you have beautiful uh, painted covers, but you also uh, have an alternate uh, photo cover for each one of these. So yeah. check them out. Yeah, buy, buy definitely. Two. Uh, yeah, definitely from uh, IDW Publishing, Orphan Black. Uh, and uh, when you're done reading the comic, then check out the show. Check out uh, the show. Check Season- out the show after you're done reading the comic. Season three. Well, you probably actually want to watch the first two seasons before you read the comic, honestly. Um, and uh, and then you'll be in the boat that Kevin is in. Uh. <laughs> Either way, it's fantastic. But they're both great. The the show and the and and they're both they're wonderful. Mark is telling me to get in the middle of the camera. No. Put this, put this here. Swallow it. Just swallow it. He says, <laughs> "I'm not Megan." Hey, hey, Kevin. Yes. Check this out. Yeah. Earlier today, I got one of the back issues of Operation Sin that you needed to complete your uh, reading pile up to this point. Oh, really? And just in time for Operation Sin number five. I'm so happy. Thank you, Troy, for for catching me up. I I, I really appreciate it. Um, Operation Sin, obviously, uh, uh, you know, like like Orphan Black, starring uh, a, a you know a variety of the same woman, almost strong women is where I'm ge- what I'm getting at. Uh, Operation Sin, of course, is is uh, Agent Carter, and and of course, not to be con- uh, you know 
uh, also we've got Howard Stark and uh, what's the other what's the guy? Well, there, there's the new character. Uh, Woodrow McCord. Woodrow McCord, right. uh, our somewhat lovable, irascible rogue who's on the team working along. Right. Doesn't trust the communists. Uh, doesn't seem to like uh, Michael Erkleovich, the uh, Ursa Major. Um, he's he's got a thing. There's something up with this guy. Uh, but there's something about his his rough roguish rashness. Man, say that three times fast. That uh, you just can't help but like. So yes, definitely. Operation Sin. Uh, what's what's not to love? What's not to love? I, besides the title, it's like oh, we're 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 tailing off of Original Sin. Not not that much, really. It's it's not all that important. And they 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 grabbed the the uh, the logo from that. It's not important. You guys love Agent Carter on TV. Read this book, and you will love her once again. I think the important thing, the tie into the. Uh, the original sin is that Operation Sin, because it occurs at a point in time before mm. those more contemporaneous events, yeah. they become part of the original sin of whatever character is relevant to the conversation at the time. All right. uh, you know, everybody had something. There was something uh, about one of the experiments for Ben Grimm's transformation. There was something about Thor and his worthiness to the hammer. Something about Nick Fury. Something about a variety of characters. And so here we see hijinks with Carter, Stark, and McCord occurring in Russia with aliens. And, and I don't want to ruin too much of the ride for you, but... You'll want to come back and pick up Operation Sin. It's been a good series up to this point. It's only up to the fifth issue. She haven't missed very much. And, and coming down to one of Kevin's favorite titles. I should have probably put this on the bottom of the pile. I don't even remember where we were in the last episode because or episode issue it was, because it was se because seventeen point one jumped in the middle and yes I, yes. I, I don't I I wasn't quite sure that I needed seventeen point one frankly I did. Ah, I did. Ah. If you're fans of The Amazing Spider-Man, you can't have enough. Now, if you're like me and Kevin here, you were fans of The Amazing Spider-Man back in the day when you had Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, and Marvel Team-Up. Marvel Team-Up? Yes. Well, Marvel Team-Up turned into Web of Spider-Man pretty much. Well, yes. yes. It, it, it went away just as Web showed up. And then you had Marvel Tales, which gave us reprints of Spider-Man. Right, and you'd have backup stories that hadn't been printed before, isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, sometimes they'd be uh, Peter Porker stories. Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider-Ham. He was uh, pretty awesome. You know what? I'm just going to give you right there, give you some good interior goodness. Um, so, Dan Slott, still working the book here. Gage, Ramos, Olzaba, and Delgado. Uh, that's that's your creative team on Sp on Spider Man. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of like this uh, the, the the cover, the homage there. You know, oh, to the Spider Man No More thing. Yes, definitely. So, like, it's, a, it's more like uh, Parker Industries No More. Yeah, yeah. I, I wondered how that was going to turn out. I'm I I feel sometimes like in a Spider Man in in any given point in Spider Man's continuity that uh, he takes a great step forward. He matures. He grows. And he advances only to have to somehow be shoved backwards into an earlier point in his development. Thanks, um, Casada. You know, I, I remember when he was that's, a that's, science teacher at Midtown High. That's you a know. thanks, Obama joke. Oh, shit. <laughs> Thanks, Casada. This guy. But uh, I, I would really, I, I would like to entreat the creative teams on Spider-Man, the editorial team, certainly, to continue to advance Peter forward. Uh, we certainly all love Peter, but he can't be the same lonesome loser teenager that he was in 1960, whatever. At some point, he's got to go forward. Uh, he's got to catch up to the rest of the world. Um, and you know what? Peter probably can't be 28 forever much longer either. Yeah, John Byrne. <clears throat> it's not John Byrne's fault. It's not his fault, but he, I just remember he wrote a, an editorial in the back of a, a, a Spider-Man years ago. And so I, I blame that one on him. Oh. It's not really his fault. No, it's really not. Guardians Team Up. Guardians Team Up, issue number five. So, Lanning, Schmidt, Duarte, and Mialo. So, look, at we've got, on, on the cover, we've got Rocket Raccoon. Now, Rocket Raccoon has got his own ongoing series, so you think, why do we need another book that's got Rocket Raccoon? But do you have uh, Spider Frog? Do you have uh, Lockheed and uh, what's Kazar's cat's name? Zabu. Zabu, the saber-toothed tiger. Anyway, so we've got a, we've got. Oh, look at all of them. There's a bunch <laughs> of the interior art is not at all the same, but whatever. 
Um, you did mention Lockheed, right? I did mention Lockheed. I, I love Lockheed. Was you know has been one of my faves forever. Oh, and then also Lockjaw as well. Lock Lockjaw I hadn't mentioned. Do do, do you remember the? Uh, yes. It was Excalibur uh, with uh, Lockheed. We were introduced to the Dragon Race. The Dragon Race. Yes, the, they came and uh, they admonished Lockheed for leaving the collective, and he had to explain his bond with Kitty Pride. Right, right. Uh, and we didn't realize that he had a language. We didn't realize that he was. I mean, we knew he was smart, but we didn't realize he was sentient. I thought you. Were, I thought you were going to tell me about that. That uh, that thing with uh, where where Lockjaw goes and supposedly tells uh, Ben Grimm that that he. I, I never had anything to say before, Ben. That was uh, from the Thing issue number three. That was messed up. And and then later, it was a Quicksilver. Who another did that? no no no, uh, Gorgon and uh, Karnak. Gorgon and Karnak, those uh, jerks. But then Quicksilver was in on the joke, and it was revealed later that in fact Lockjaw never said anything. Uh, that because was a he's different just a dog. writer undoing that job of a writer prior to him. Right. So, um, I believe it was John Byrne scripting the series at the time. Yeah. But, uh, so lastly, lastly, you're as ready I for mentioned, this? Rocket Raccoon. Say hello to my little friend. Yeah, yeah, Rocket Raccoon. He's uh, it's this this Scotty Young series has really been uh, well received. It seems Very. like. You've got you you've got a ton of these coming in, and obviously you you guys don't buy a you know a, a ton of extra anything. I mean you know you get a few going in your back issues, of course, but uh, for the amount that I see coming in, this must be remaining uh, a very popular title. I, I have to admit that I'm personally kind of behind on it, but uh, it's something that I look forward to catching up on. I think I'm only about five or six issues in, so I've got I've got a nice chunk to uh, catch yeah, up on. You've got about another four or five to go. Yeah. What I find myself doing, Kevin when I'm reading my personal comics yeah. is uh, I put them together in groups so that as I read the stories even when they blend together in my head they yeah. blend together more relevantly yeah me too so I read Avengers and New Avengers me too and Avengers uh, Assemble Avengers World what have you whatever Avenger titles close together and then I read Thor Captain America Iron Man Captain Marvel yeah get all the Avengers in a chunk and then I switch over to the DC side of things now these days I'm reading Convergence so I read the main Convergence book, and then I start knocking through the Convergence issues. And um, you're all caught up now. I am all caught up, and now the number two issues are coming out, so Starting I'm ready tomorrow, to move today. on to this this, the second half of the Convergence chapter series, which will lead us into the events of Divergence. And I really want to read up far enough, fast enough, that I can talk to people about Divergence. Um, I'm, I know that DC has currently... They, they have critics. They have people who criticize their moves, criticize their, their epics, the nature of the epics. What are they doing? Why are they doing this? They just did this. Why are they doing that? And I simply say to people, let's wait and let the story unfold before we criticize it. It's easy to jump on it and criticize it from the sidelines, but we haven't even read it yet. Uh, if you picked up Convergence and read it, if you looked at the interactions of the characters, if you looked at the way that the, uh, the events unfold from Future's End, and World's End going forward. Uh, if we look at some of the development of Telos, uh, if we look at, uh, and my favorite part, the return of DC's older continuity characters, the Justice Society, inside the dome, life for these heroes, what was it like? It has gone on when we weren't looking at them. Um, what was life like for Nightwing and Oracle, for Harley Quinn, for Wally West back from the Speed Force, for the new Teen Titans, uh, Etc., etc. So there's a lot to read there, and we're only at the halfway point, so it's a little soon to judge just yet. So I might have to get back into DC Comics again because they might be undoing some of the things that uh, I took issue with. Indeed. With the New 52. And you were probably, uh, for those of you who are deep into the New 52, uh, at some point we're going to talk about Batman, issue number 40, and Justice League, issue number 40, and Superman, issue number 40. Books that did not come out on their expected release date, so here they are coming out alongside of the Convergence titles. They're not part of Convergence. They're part of the ongoing stories that were happening. Uh, the movie homage variant covers uh, Magic Mike for the Justice League, if I remember correctly, and Batman was The Mask, featuring the Joker, the final chapter of Endgame, and Superman was Superfly. And yes, I saw that movie in the theaters. Yes, true story. I did. I did. Kevin didn't see that movie until it was released on Blu-ray. 
Uh, I think it was probably on, you know, some cable channel in, in the 80s. <laughs> uh, when you were too young to watch it, your parents yes. were going to let you watch that movie? I, my parents didn't really uh, police my, my watching of cable shows. That explains a lot of things. <laughs> I, I don't think we really had cable a lot. I mean, occasionally we did, but, you know, it was always at somebody else's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's my my uncle's house. I got a, a lot. Yeah, he had the big old the six foot satellite dish, and you could point it at, you know, all the sat com com sat Telstar, all those. You know what I'm saying? You you old people know what I'm saying. You could point it at different ones, and then you would, and you wouldn't even have to have a subscription back in those days. You would just get it. This guy. Yeah, I watched all the all those channels. You know those channels. <laughs> so yeah, there's our top five. There's a, oh yeah we're done and, and our get, and our plus one our plus one of course for both of us uh, Brittany is Secret Wars Secret number one. Wars number one yes indeed so check that out you might Marvel, call it Secret Wars three number one yeah well if you're me this is this is going to be so much bigger it is bigger and if you haven't already please come in to flashback and uh, get caught up on the Avengers titles that led up to this, because it's definitely worth reading. It's not just because you have to, because you don't necessarily have to, but if you do, you will really enjoy it, and you'll have a, a richer experience with Secret Wars. Yes, indeed. Uh, and if uh, picking up single issues isn't your thing, then uh, let's talk about getting you the trade paperbacks. Let's uh, back you up that way. There you go. Um, I want to say six volumes of the Avengers up to this point, five volumes of the new Avengers. Uh, if that's going to be a thing for you, <laughs> then uh, let's do it that way. But let's get you caught up. At least the most recent one or two. Speaking of getting caught up, Kev. Yeah. You ready to break here and go to part two? We're going to going to go to part two now. Here's what you're going to uh, look forward to in part two. Over this past week, not only have we had uh, free comic book day here at Flashback, not only have we had Avengers Age of Ultron, that second Avengers movie, but we've also had lots of wonderful other things, including uh, you know Game of Thrones and and uh, the the series, not series, sorry, the season first first season finale of Gotham came on last night. A f quite a few things to talk about, so uh, stay tuned. Scroll down and you can you can get that link. So uh, uh, after you've read that, or after you've read that. After you've watched that, <laughs> we'll see you next week with part one again right here at Flashback Comics. Fist bump! From leaking tall builders to going off like Yama bombs. Switch your internet browser to comicsonline.com.